Even though you're white, even though you're fully abled, the Amatio Deo is, is not connected to any of those things. You have it independent of those things. So in other words, it doesn't matter that you're a, a woman, it doesn't matter that you're white, and it doesn't matter that you're able-bodied, or whether you are black, disabled, and a man. The Amatio Deo is to be loved. And that is a better value than tolerance. But I haven't heard any good groundings for why you think slavery is wrong. Because slavery is destructive of human dignity. It treats someone who is a human and deserves to be treated as a human, as less than human. But that's what abortion that's does. Wrong. But abortion does that. To stand on the truth and the way that we know the truth is by following the evidence yeah. and the evidence points to the reality of the resurrection so if someone honestly looks at that evidence I am convinced that an honest person would believe in the resurrection and that those that don't either haven't looked or haven't looked sincerely you asked the question madam Why is that fact of reason for me to accept Christianity, right? Okay. So if we think, like, you know, you talked earlier about, you know, that should be a reason for us to accept Christianity. <coughs> right? Yeah. Um, what tends to distinguish those is, you know, a story about what justifies believing in these, you know, sets of norms that constitute the religion. But it's, it's the, you know, acceptable religion means acceptable norms, right? Yeah. But the fact that, you know, the resurrection happened isn't a reason for me to accept right. the things <coughs> that make up Christianity, right? So, I, I, if you'll forgive me... So, <coughs> so, it seems that actually what you're objecting to is not the resurrection, but the consequences that come from the resurrection. So, allow me to answer your question as I understand it. Um, <coughs> however, I'm not inviting you in this discussion right now. Sorry, hay fever. <coughs> I'm not inviting you right now to accept a series of values. I'm inviting you right now to accept a statement of truth, which is that a man who was dead for three days rose from the dead. And that that rising from the dead confirms his message. So you ask me, if Jesus rose from the dead, what does that mean for you? Well, it means this. <clears throat> if Jesus rose from the dead, then by the miraculous act of the man rising from the dead, his teachings are confirmed. What he said about himself, what he said about the world, what he says about you and me. About what they believe. That, yeah. That's a different. That's a, that's a different point. To that what? To, exactly. To the, to the point that to, the fact they weren't lying about their beliefs doesn't make their beliefs correct. But if right, right if 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 something I if I not be lying if I say I believe <coughs> that like I don't know something really obviously false like slavery is permissible. Yeah. Right? Well, there are lots of Muslims I'm in this park that will argue that. that it, the case, but that doesn't. So, so let, let me, no, yeah, but, but the point is, if someone says to you that I am going to die and I am going to raise myself up from the dead, that's a pretty profound act. Right, and it means that this person is not an ordinary person. And if they're not an ordinary person and they're couching their teachings on the fact that they're going to raise themselves from the dead, and then they do indeed raise themselves from the dead, then that means we should pay this person some attention. Mm -hmm. All right, I see. So it's, it's, it's less about, it, it's, the, the, the argument is, well, it's evidence that Jesus was divine. Yeah. We should care about what people with the status of the divine say, right? Their, their word, their, their opinion has a certain weight. <laughs> Right? Yes, the miracles give way. Yeah. So the, the so the, what we're saying is, I mean, and, and actually, if we if we're going to if we're going to pay attention to Jesus because the fact he rose himself from the dead, 
then that means that that um, that that when he teaches that he is divine, which he does very concretely in lots of different places, that we should take that seriously as well. And in so doing, that that we should pay heed to what he teaches, because this is not an ordinary person. Let me let me put this question to you this way. So my 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 point to you is that you, you would have a very uh, you would have a picture of the divine that I would not share with you, because I don't believe that that which is divine teaches falsehood. Right. Okay. I believe that that which one of the attributes of the divine is that it is all truth. Can I interject? And Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and Jesus himself says, and Jesus himself says that I am the truth. Yeah. Now, you, 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 what was your comment, so sir? I was, I was just saying, I could interject, that you're saying that that's the truth, but our Islam doesn't say that Jesus, peace be upon him, was crucified. We're saying that Jesus was a prophet. Yeah. So you're saying that that is 100% truth, and take it your point, where we're now saying that, okay, the Bible says one thing, but now the Quran, which is the final book, the final decree of God, yeah. says something different and is correcting that version. Yeah. So how can you stand here and turn around and tell this tell this, this woman here that look 100 percent that is what's happening so allow me to, to reply to that now please know i listened to everything you said yeah, and yeah, i didn't absolutely. interrupt you yeah yeah no, I, but, I'm, not, but, I'm not intending but, to interrupt okay so you, you in the same way i can I, i'll say this I, i've got a couple of points to make i'll try to make them in quick yeah. succession because maybe you'd like to come back in as well um is that i can say it in the same way that you've literally just told her that the quran is the final book and corrects my book now, I dispute that claim that you have made, and one of the reasons that I would give to dispute that claim is as you have accurately said, you've said that the Quran denies the crucifixion. So if we've got two opposing claims about one single event, what do we do? We look for other evidence. Uh, well, I'm sorry, you, sorry, I didn't interrupt you. Don't go interrupt ahead, go me. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So let yeah, me finish. Yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. So when we've got a claim about a singular event, and we've got two conflicting stories about the event, an intelligent person looks for other evidence from third parties who are not A, side A or side B, they're side C and see what side C, D, C. And then if they're really good, we might find a, a, a side D and see what they say. Well, when we do that, when we look at the first century, we find that Jews, Christians and pagans all agree that Jesus Christ was crucified which validates the Christian position and invalidates the Quran because the Quran came seven centuries later in a country 1,000 miles away by a person that was no witness to any of the events. Now, would you like to jump back into this conversation? I mean, I guess I'm not gonna get embroiled in like, you know. But I mean, I no, no, let, let her speak. I, I think it does, it let her does, speak. I would like to know no, what, what, let her what speak. you are speaking about. Yes, we're, right. we're just talking about uh, 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 Christianity at the moment, yeah. I think, I, th I, guess, I guess what motivated my point was, like, my first question was yeah. that, like, I, I'm, it just seems to me that if, if we're, if we're going to pick between a worldview, right? Yeah. A position to follow a set of, like, you know, norms that we think are true. Yeah. Surely, like, all these empirical facts, even if they're valid, even if they're true, they yeah. happen. Yeah. That's not a good reason to accept the norms, right? Right, so let's... So, yeah. so, 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 you know, I would put to you, like, why not secular humanism? Right. right, so let me reply to that, and, and I'd love to have that conversation with you. Um, can I also send that? No, let, can once I, you, sorry. Once you've answered, once sorry. You've answered. Yeah, yeah, once I've answered yeah, yeah, her, yeah, then yeah, yeah. we'll Just go backwards and forwards. And then, and then if, and then if you want, and, then, and like you made a statement yeah, yeah. about the Bible, remember? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and I'd love to have that conversation with you, so hopefully, me and you, if you want, we can have a more extended conversation. But, what I would say is this, is that, because really, your, from the very beginning, the thing that your, your focus is, is about the application, like, what do we do? about our lives, well, how do we live? Yeah, I mean, that's right, so, of religion, so, right? No, so no, there's, there's, well, there's I mean, there's so there's allow, me, allow me, allow me, uh, yeah, from, allow me, yeah, allow me to reply. So, as a Christian, we believe that the, the metaphysics underpins the way you live. If you don't have good metaphysics, the way you live is gonna collapse. And, and my fundamental criticism of secular humanism is that it doesn't have sufficient metaphysics to justify its existence. And so, in reality, it collapses. The thing about the Christian faith is that Christ teaches how we should live. The Sermon on the Mount, you can find it in Matthew chapter 5, 
6 and 7. I encourage you to take a Bible if you haven't got one, or get one, and I can give you one, and have a read of it. And, and assess Jesus' teachings for yourself. Because I would say that Jesus' teachings are superior to anything in secular humanism. Superior. Right? But the thing is... I mean, the, can I just the, say, his, secular humanism, I'm just morality. Yeah, right? like, but, 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 but secular... Yeah, but, but morality... So, so let, let me finish my point. So that, that Christ's teachings, though, unlike secular humanism, is established on deep metaphysical roots, deep metaphysical foundations. You have the reason. Right. Is, is that not enough? So, let, I'm, I, 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 I want to have this conversation with yeah, you, but, no, but you, do you... No, no, no. No. So, if you stand, if you hang around, I'd love to have an extended conversation with you, because I think it's a very interesting debate. And to be fair, yeah, he's, he's gone over there, so we'll continue talking. So, you said we have reason, right? Now, the rationality that was born of the Enlightenment, okay, because I'm sure you know that it was from the Enlightenment that we ended up with the, uh, the rise of rationalism as the, the, the epistemological framework of our uh, society, right? That was framed in an extremely European manner, right? The, the, the problem with the reason that you're talking about is that it assumes a whole set of predicates and assumptions that are European, that are not necessarily true of others. And it assumes, it assumes that other cultures can't have a reasoning of their own. Yes, because if you look at the... Yes, of course, the, the European colonialism. When, when the, the, the European colonialism was a, an enlightenment project. But, but now, do we not acknowledge that reason has limits? No, it's condemned the colonialism. No, no. It's that, just that we weren't in touch with the truth. No. No, no, of course not. Not initially, but, but now when we can rationalise about colonialism and when we come to what, you know, when we apply reason, you know, in hindsight, we, we can say yeah. that it is true that colonialism was contrary to reason. So allow me to reply because what you're, what you're assuming there is that somehow reason can create values. And, and what, I, yeah, what I'm actually saying is that reason is just a methodological way of thinking, but what you end up thinking is decided by your values. Reason of itself cannot result in um, values that can be substantiated. Now, Nietzsche understood this. I, I believe values are prior to reason. Values yeah. give us reason. Exactly. No, values give us the, 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 the framework in which to reason. We reason inside a framework. Yeah. Sorry, I meant, I meant like the cumulative yeah. reason. It isn't like values give yeah. you reason for action. Yeah, but it, but it can't give you values. Right. And I'll, I'll prove it to you. In the Enlightenment, you know, they didn't reason their ways to any values outside of a context. They reason themselves to values like tolerance and the secular state and individualism because Europe had just undergone a civil war between Christians that had killed 8 million people. And then when you understand, well, that they came up with a secular state because they wanted to organize society away from church, individualism because they wanted to move away from collectivism, i.e. The, the two parties, Protestant and Catholic, and, 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 and um, tolerance because of all the wars, what you realize is they didn't just reason their way there, their reasoning came out of a, a backdrop. Yeah, reason can't get you those values on its own. Yes. Now, Christianity ha gives us a series of values rooted in the life of Jesus. Yeah, I park the previous point. Oh, I guess a different question is, okay, what is the difference between between liberal and egalitarian values? Yep. Right? Yes. At, at, at bottom, what yep. is the difference between those values, um, which, you know, as, as an atheist, I, I think are valid by the fact that when we reason correctly and, and we, we argue it, it we, we have that kind of debates and, yeah. you know, we... we we accept them, yeah. right? Those values like liberty, you know, individual liberty, equality, yeah. um, you know, tolerance, yeah. um, all these things. What, like, in their actual content, in their substance, what is the difference between the values that Christ taught yeah. and those values? Okay, I'm going to answer that question, and if you mind, I'll, I'll give a bit more. Um, so, so, so the bit more first, which is that I, I want to stress again, the Enlightenment did not reason to those values. 
Those values were a necessity because Europe was looking for a way to end the wars of the Reformation. And so it, it, you didn't, and you have now just, you have just inherited them as a historical tradition of 300 years from the Enlightenment. But the reality is, reason didn't get you there. Christians failing to be Christian got us there because Christians killed Christian and killed 8 million of ourselves in a civil war. Now, my point is, therefore, it's your, your claim that you, you, we re-reason our way to these values is a false one. It's a false claim. Reason didn't get you those values. Necessity demanded those values. But, but, right. Okay, okay. If, if, if we disagree about about where the values came from, yes. Then now, that's fine. I can disagree right. about that. But, but surely, like the question whether they're valid now. Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna come. Uh, yeah. 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 So I'm 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 actually saying to you that Chris, I'm I want to propose this thesis. Christian values and Christian ethics are superior to secular human ethics. Now let me make some cases. Would you agree with me that if you can't practice what you preach and if your, your ideology intrinsically leads to contradiction, that it's a no good ideology? Yeah, it lacks right. integrity and it's critical. Let me demonstrate to you that the liberal humanist project lacks integrity. Liberals talk about tolerance. However, the French state and the American Revolution were both built out of intolerance. The French Revolution. They're just getting their values wrong. Yeah. Like, they're, oh, wait, they're let, let, high, let right? me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Right. Right. Tolerance. Tolerance is an empty term. It's an. It's a term that you fill it with meaning. What exactly should we tolerate? For instance, I believe that the Muslims that I have met on camera. We've got it all on camera in this park who advocate for slavery, advocate for child marriage, advocate for uh, killing Christians who want to leave Islam, I believe that they should be treated as in equal terms to the vilest racist. Do you agree that we should not tolerate that? Um, I mean, I don't, I, okay, so I don't agree with those. Uh, but should we tolerate it? Should we tolerate a neo-Nazi racist who no. says the most... Right, so no. should we tolerate an Islamist who says that I, as a Christian, should be made a second-class citizen? No. Right, great. Now, on what basis... What, what, on, on, on how are we defining... You see, you see my point? The, ter the fact is, tolerance doesn't communicate anything. We have to fill tolerance with something to lay out the lines of what we will tolerate. Yeah. So tolerance is not a value. It's the shadow of a value. It is something that, that is like your shadow now. It is, it, is, it is connected to your presence, but it isn't you. Yeah, hello. You might not be able to articulate like, what, Sorry, you know, it, it might take some time to articulate what the value of tolerance really is. But I think we can agree that it, it, it's a good, right? The fact that we, in, in this country, we have a plurality of religions and, you know, yeah, you uh, none is imposed by anyone yeah. else, by the state. Um, and right. we live peacefully you know, in, the, in, the, in yeah. the main together. Yeah. That's a good thing. So let me reply to that. We can call it tolerance or something else, but that's... Yeah. So let me, let, me, let me reply to that because we, we, we have a religion of the state and it's the religion of humanity. We have a religion of the state and it is the, the religion of self. So if you disagree with the LGBTQT silent P ideology, you can lose your job, you can go to prison, you can, you know, etc, etc, etc. In other words, in other words, we don't live in this tolerant society that you're trying to describe. But it would be good if we did. But we don't. Yeah, and, and the that's not an argument against the fact that tolerance is good. But, but what are we... We what? may be failing. But defining tolerance by what, though? Because the people that would prosecute me and say that I should go to prison because I do not agree that a child can self-mutilate... Yeah, I mean, and, and one, one second. But, but the point is, these people are calling me intolerant. Right, but they're saying they're calling me intolerant for the sake of tolerance. They're wrong about tolerance. Well, I'm going to suggest to you, let's forget the idea of tolerance altogether. It's a bad idea. It's a rubbish idea. It's crap. Chuck it in the bin. I give you a better idea. Love. 
as a value. But love that is directed metaphysically to the belief that you have the imatio deo. You have the image of God in you. Even though you're an atheist, even though you're a woman, or I'm a man, right, let me finish on that comment because I'm trying to make a point here. Even though you're white, even though you're fully abled, the imatio deo is, is not connected to any of those things. You have it independent of those things. So in other words, it doesn't matter that you're a, a woman, it doesn't matter that you're white, and it doesn't matter that you're able-bodied, or whether you are black, disabled, and a man. The imatio deo is to be loved. And that is a better value than tolerance. Tolerance is a cheap, a cheap substitute for Christian love. I, I agree that, that love's a great value. Is it better than tolerance? Um, I think they're both good. Um, well, I'm asking you, is it better? Uh, I mean, well, I think we need both. Right. Well, I, with, without love, like our, uh, you know, there would be something incredible lost from our uh, relationships. Right. And, uh, so, and so, so now let me expand. And without tolerance, we would be at war with each other. So now let me expand my argument further, because here's why my concept of Christian love, I am saying, arguing to you, is better than your secular humanism. Because of my concept of love, and because of my belief in the metaphysics of the Imatio Dei, the image of God, right? I have a clear remit by what can be defined and what can't be defined, and what should and should not be tolerated. Because I love the image of God, and therefore I defend the image of God. Which means that I am against slavery. I'm also against abortion. I'm also against euthanasia. I'm also against child marriage. I'm also against, um, you know, um, slavery, if I haven't already said that example. However, in a secular, in a secular liberal state, all of these questions are up for grabs. And what we tolerate and don't tolerate changes. The Weimar Republic, the Weimar Republic was one of the most liberally tolerant societies that has ever been imagined. And it allowed the Nazis to take over. So what you're saying is there's when you have the metaphysics that Christianity gives you, then what you end up with is a, is a much more stable foundation for your values. Yes. Right? And a, a, a foundation that means that your values are less subject to to uh, to change and to being discarded for new values or whatever. It is. Yeah, because it's concrete and unchangeable. So Christians for two thousand years have been against abortion. Christians for 2,000 years have been pro-adoption. Christians for 2,000 years have been against slavery. Christians for 2,000 years have been, um, you know, I, I mean, I could give you a, 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 a bunch of other examples. Are Christians against, uh, just on the abortion question, sorry. Yeah, uh, a Christian kind of figured that that'd be the yeah, one you go. Yeah, that's the one that, are Christians against torture? Are Christians against torture? Yeah, would Christians say that torture is in what sense? So, I'm um, subjecting someone to, like, <laughs> the law's definition, inhuman and degrading truth. Pain, suffering, um... I guess, I guess in that... In that so, so, to answer your question, right, you, you've got to understand how Christians think about this question. We don't have a list of right and wrongs. What we have a list, what we have, a, what we have is a list of values, and then we have virtues. Or we, we believe in living by a virtue ethic. And virtue ethics is about having the right mindset, not a list of yeses and noes. So, so I'm going to now answer your question. Are Christians against torture? Yes, in virtually every instance, except when, for instance, say you were some kind of sick psychopath, not that you are, you're lovely, right? And you had buried a small child in a coffin and they only had an hour or two to live but you weren't telling us where that child was. A child's got an hour to live, it's an innocent child, because of your sick, sick mind, you won't tell us. In those circumstances, I would torture of you to try and rescue that child. But, but, of course, yes, if I got the wrong person, yeah, yeah, exactly. If I'd got the wrong person, then yes, absolutely, you would have, you would have means to demand the re re compensation. But would you agree, would you agree, that in a very extreme example, like the one I've just given you, that you could make an argument for torture. Um, and if you have any you doubts, an imagine it was your child. Imagine you, it was your you child. Would still, 
you know, you might like you might do wrong no matter what you do, right? So if, if you let the child die, then you do something, then you wrong yeah, the child. It, it's, if, you, if you talk to the yeah. innocent person, you wrong, you wrong the, the innocent person. But I guess like I guess using the example that so I've the example is a great one, right? Because it's the one I use when I when I argue for for a pro-choice position, right? Great minds think alike. Right. Yeah, no, Fools I, I, I love never that differ. Example, right? it's great. Um, so, from my point of view, firstly, answer my question. In the example that I've given, yeah. would torture be justified? No. Right. So you disagree, even to rescue a small child inside a coffin you that's dying. the person that you're torturing. Okay. Right. Fair enough. Now that we've taken that position, now we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll advance the argument. Okay, now so, I understand where you're coming so from. So my position is that a woman that gets pregnant yep. and doesn't want to keep the child and is forced to have that child, yep. right, but has no means of not having that child, yeah, that is torture. Okay. Right? Uh, being forced pregnancy is torture. Right? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Do do people have the right not to bear the consequences of their decisions? Um. So I see where you're going with this. Um, so my response would be um, consent. It, it's a very strange argument to, speak, to say that consent to sex is consent to bearing a child. But that hasn't actually answered my question. My, my question was, do people have the right to not bear the consequences of their decisions? It depends what decision is. To, to have sex that leads to a child. Um, so do people have the right to opt out of the consequences of their decisions? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, do people have the right not to bear the consequences of their decisions? When the consequences are torture, yes. Right, okay. So, if you're... Okay, so let's, let's advance that argument then. Because... If you're saying that a person doesn't have... Firstly, you, you've got to establish to me that it's torture, and I don't believe... I think that's a false analogy. So, I, mean, I don't believe it is torture. Imagine, I mean, I haven't had a child, so you know, I can't speak personally. But just think, for example, the pain of childbirth, right? That's pretty much agreed to be the most severe pain imagine other than for men you know being kicked in a certain area or passing yeah, through yeah, stones yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll accept that yeah. but it's an ex it's a severe excruciating pain it's right? also natural <laughs> it's also natural it's also natural it's completely natural that doesn't make it less you don't have a right painful. not you don't have a right not to avoid you don't have a right to avoid pain really no Okay, okay, you don't have the right to avoid general pain in your life, but you have the right to not have anyone else inflict that pain upon you. But you, no one has inflicted that pain upon you. You have, not, not you personally, the hypothetical you, have inflicted that pain on yourself. You have made a choice. A choice to have sex that has led to the, consu to the, cre the consummation of a child, and, and, and in that act, you have bore the consequence. You have made a choice, and now you have a consequence. You don't have the right to avoid the consequence just because you don't like the consequence when you made the choice freely. Okay, so suppose I. Firstly, I let's deal with the free choices before we start using the examples of rape and stuff like that. No, no, I'm not going to use the examples. Oh, okay, of rape. well, no. I thought that was no, where we were going to go. Because I think where we're disagreeing is, is the premise that. Like, if you have sex, then it is your responsibility to bear the consequences, right? Um, even if those consequences are, I think we can agree, quite invasive and quite um, painful then, and quite... Then they're not invasive. It's not an invasion. I mean, growing, growing a person Yeah, that's, that's not an invasive. No, of course it's not invasive. I mean, it, it's, it's a completely natural thing. If your body actually, your body is designed to do it. No. So you, it, you know, it, cancer is invasive, okay. right? Yeah, that, that cancer is invasive because your body's going wrong. You can't describe something that your entire body, on a month-to-month -month basis, ticks over in anticipation of doing and call that invasive. Your entire body is programmed to do it. Your entire body wants to do it. And given half a chance, your entire body will do it. You can't call that invasive. It's not a cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I think maybe we're disagreeing with the meaning of invasive. So, by invasive, I mean it is. It's encroaching on your personal choices. Well, no, I mean it's 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 not a small thing, right? If I get pregnant, everything about my body changes. Correct. Everything. Yes. And it's it's painful. And it's wonderful. It, is it? And it's, it's not beautiful. wonderful if I don't want it, though, is it? Yeah, but the thing is, if Imagine you but if you don't want it, against your God, will, yeah, someone. 
if made it the case against your will that you experienced all that there is to experience about pregnancy. So yep. all the pain, yep. all the, the nausea, and then the giving birth, yep. and then and then you know afterwards you have to you know it, it's, it's it's not like the the responsibility and the uh, the extent to which your life changes is is. is it's stopped, right? You've got, you got this for 18 years. Can, I, can I reply? Yeah. Yeah, because your, 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 your whole argument is based on a false premise, which is you did choose to have that sex. Okay. So and it is a consequence of sex yeah. that a child could okay. be born. And what the point is, we're not saying, hold on, we're not saying it's your responsibility to raise that child because there is an out. You can give it up for adoption. Christians believe in adoption. In fact, I don't know if you know this, Christians were the ones that championed and transformed adoption. In the classical world, they just used to leave children out on the street to die if they didn't want yeah. them. And Christians were the ones that went up and picked up all the little children and established the orphanages. Right? Yeah. Right? Okay, so right, but one, let me finish. But, but my point to you is that the, uh, the, what we're saying to you is you don't have the right to harm someone else. That's what we're saying you don't have the right to do. We're not saying that you have to take care of this child because you can give it up for adoption. And there's lots of people out there that want kids that will adopt. But what we're saying to you is because of your choice, you don't have the right to kill someone else. Right. Okay. I think that's a perfectly fair argument. Well, so I, I would still want to push back on the choice thing. So let's say, I, you know, let's say I think as a conservative estimate, the chances of any woman falling pregnant on any instance of sexual intercourse is, it's incredibly low. It's like, I don't know, 1%? That's probably an overestimation. It's very, very low, right? Um, Higher. Okay. I mean, it's not over 10%. Is Even at 40, you've got 33% chance of getting pregnant. Every time you have sex, on any single occasion. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, That's it varies I mean. in the course of the month, yeah, obviously. So, so yeah, so when I'm ovulating, I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. be able to no, fire yeah. quite yeah, 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 yeah. on any single yeah, given yeah, day yeah, of yeah, intercourse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very low chance. Yeah. Right? So, um, so you're saying that... So, okay, let's suppose that I go to a... I don't know, I go to... Um, Ukraine, where the you know the area of Ukraine which is now you're not supposed to visit because it was uh, contaminated by Chernobyl, yeah. Cancer, right? Yeah. Let's suppose the same amount the the, the, the the probability of me getting cancer from going to going to that area yeah. is this about roughly the same, right? Yeah. Um. So on your argument. If we think that by having sex and taking that not point whatever percent chance is, then you you chose to be pregnant. Yep. Then does it also follow that you chose by going to Chernobyl that you could have cancer? And what's your what was the final conclusion of this what's hypothetical? The final conclusion Are you saying that I would be against someone getting cancer treatment? Well. Right. Well firstly, you you're framing abortion wrong. Abortion isn't a medical treatment. But abortion is an interference with a totally natural process. It's like someone stopping your heart. Your heart, left alone, will beat. Your body, left alone, will grow a child once you're pregnant. Your tumour will grow by itself right? if you don't intervene. Yes, absolutely. But the tumour is your body going wrong. Your RNA and DNA are malfunctioning. That's not normal. You're, you're, it's normal in the sense that it's common but it's not normal in the sense that, that was, that's what your body is supposed to do. So you can't compare developing a treatment when your body goes wrong, like when you break a leg, yeah, and sticking a splint on, to abortion, because abortion isn't a medical treatment. It is just a murder. It is just killing a child. Uh, it, you left both men and women experience cancer, whereas giving birth only women have the, uh, the, the ability. The ability we, which means that it's an intrinsically innate and natural process. So it shouldn't be medicated. I mean, it, it's it, to, to go to go from the incredibly valuable to the incredibly benign. Like it's like cellulite. We've medicated cellulite. It's totally normal. It's a natural thing. You don't need to medicate cellulite. Like, right? But we've medicated cellulite because a bunch of capitalists realised that they can prey on the vulnerabilities and sensitivities of women and get them to spend a fortune on stuff that is just normal body function. And, and that's what's happening with the abortion industry. Mary Curie 
was a, 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 a neo-Nazi racist who established her 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 her, her centres to try and keep the black population down. That was the reason why she established her abortion business. Because she was a member of the Ku Klux Klan and she wanted to stop black people breeding. Yeah, and that's awful. Right, right. great. So shall we shall we shall we cancel that organization? Can we agree that organization is awful? Okay. Let's let's let us suppose then we have a an organization that doesn't have motor history who's providing. Great. Now right. let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. Right? Let's talk about someone who set up abortion more in line with your thinking. Can, yeah. I, can I just make a Yeah, of course. I, I'm quite, I guess I'm quite unusual as a pro-choice in that I still, so it's say if I got pregnant, an unwanted pregnancy and I had an abortion, I understand and I would accept that I am doing something wrong by having an abortion, right? Yeah. I am wronging that... Life? That potential life inside me. Why do you say potential? It's life. Well, it, On what grounds is it not a life? Okay, let's, okay, it's a life, right? Okay, okay great. I, I am wronging that a life. life, yes. Right? Yes. Um, so I accept that. Do you but think? I think sometimes we wrongdoing can be justified. Like torture. Um. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. fine. There you go. Um. But. But. I mean. Yeah. But when I said that torturing the person to save the child would be wrong, I didn't mean it could be justified on the basis of saving the child. No. Fine, you. You said. Wrong. You. You said it was always wrong. Torture is wrong, yeah. Torture. Because, I mean, you can't, like, it's like if I, if, if someone it is, says, It okay, is a normative evil. Give me a gun. Yeah, it is a normative evil. It's a normative evil. these people, right? It's a norm, we are agreed, it's a normative evil that in certain circumstances, it's like lying. Lying is a normative evil. If you've got the Nazi at the door. So and you've got Anne Frank, then, then you lie, your back, then you you lie, lie through your back teeth. Yeah, exactly. It's, so it's a normative so evil. But it's a normative evil that, in extreme circumstances, you you exempt you're, you, because a greater good is served by a opposed. Right. So now we've established that under certain circumstances we can torture people. Let's now talk about abortion. Are there certain circumstances that would justify an abortion? I would say there are no circumstances that would justify a deliberate abortion. Not at all. Not rape. Not incest. Not. Um, no, no, just zero, right? So if like a, I mean, I, I, I don't, it wasn't my, part of my plan to go to the extremes, so I don't think we need the extremes. I'm just, glad. It's nice to talk to someone who doesn't do that. I just we can it, stay in the normal yeah, then, let's stay in the normal. I just normal. think we need that, okay, we have, we have two competing interests here, right? Yeah. We have the interest of the life, of the fetus, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I accept that, I don't think there's any point in arguing about whether it's a person or not, whether it's a life yeah. or whatever, I accept that. And then we've got the interest of the woman, right? Yeah. So what we're balancing, what we're kind of, what we have to do is a death and extreme torture for nine months. No, then, you haven't so justified, sorry, you haven't justified this characterization that it's extreme torture. I mean, that, imagine if I subjected you to childbirth, right? The pain of childbirth. Would you not consider that torture? No. It, it can't be defined as torture. It's not natural in your case. It's it's, it's like the equivalent pain, right? If I, equivalent pain and suffering of childbirth. But I, I, I poke you with a rod right. and you experience it. If I get now. if I get really bad constipation, am I being tortured by the universe? Torture implies intention, something that can only be an interpersonal Exactly, right? exactly. Can only, you can only now, be tortured exactly. by is, is, is pregnancy, is pregnancy... Forced pregnancy. No, no, talking, there's no. Are, that's what we are about, no, there's no such thing as forced pregnancy. You see, that's it doesn't. That doesn't exist. So, there's no so, such thing as forced pregnancy. If I unintentionally get the woman get pregnant, and then well, I'm not committed an abortion. Is that not forced pregnancy? Right. If you unintentionally get pregnant, yep. you made a choice to have sex that could lead to a pregnancy. But I didn't make a you, choice. You, you. Like, let me finish. You don't have the right to kill a child because you made a choice. You don't have the right to take a life because you made a choice. Let's not even use the word child. We agree, we've agreed that it's a life. I'm saying that you don't have a right to take a life because it's inconvenient to you. But it's not necessarily, you're assuming that the reasons that women have an abortion is inconvenient. A lot of women do have abortions because of inconvenience. When you have an abortion, you're in inconvenience. That's wrong. It is wrong, yeah. Good. But, I don't, but I don't think that you should be, I don't think it's anyone else's um, right. To, you have committed a wrong, right? Yeah. But it's not the right of anyone else to stop you from doing that. What about that woman? Let's let, and, and, and it's a shame that we've now just zoomed in on the abortion thing. 
But I, I want to try and link it back to the overall argument about humanism versus Christianity. Because I genuinely believe that Christianity is better guidance than secular humanism. Secular humanism cannot tell us where life begins. It cannot... It, yeah, and it, and it agrees with me that life begins at fertilization. Yeah. yeah we, we, we can get to most Christian principles by right. reason and science. Mm, well, I mean, that, that's part of the discussion that I wish we would have spent more time on because I, I would suggest to you that maybe you can't. Like, the, the, but, but secular humanism cannot tell us where life is. And at the moment, a whole bunch of secular humanists are calling it wrong. They're saying that life doesn't start a conception. When geneticists are saying that it does. Sorry, I, I think, I'm, I, think I'm, 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 I haven't been clear. When I say secular humanism, I don't mean like the ideology secular humanism. Yeah. I just mean morality, non-theistic morality. Right, but, right. No, okay, so non-theistic morality. Liberal egalitarianism, yes. let's say that. Yes, liberal egalitarianism is wrapped up with secularism. It's yeah. wrapped up in the project of the Enlightenment. The, the package deal of the Enlightenment is reason I'm, I'm, is reason in empiricism for epistemology, state uh, for loci of organization, individual for loci of identity, and um, oh well, we'll just stop at those four. Like that, that's the package of the Enlightenment. All of that package was invented out of necessity to get away from the Reformation Wars. Reason doesn't get you anywhere close to any of those things. There's no epistemological grounding, there's no metaphysical roots to any of those ideas, and we see it collapsing in front of us. Classical liberalism is being eaten up by progressive liberalism like a cancer. Progressive liberals are the most intolerant, bigoted, savagely cruel fanatics dedicated to their cults of humanity i.e. the killing of children the mutilation of children the sexualization of children and the idea that anyone can question the self that is God immediately is anathematized and cancelled right progress your kind of and i'm making a slight assumption here because i'm slightly assuming that you're a classical liberal but your kind of classical liberalism is literally dying at the hands of progressive liberalism literally dying at the hands of progressive Bob, Bob, why are you calling him i'm a sorry devil i'm having a conversation why are you calling him a devil worshiper? sorry about he's this. a christian he's a good christian why are you calling him a devil worshiper can you, you answer you the get, question? I'm having a conversation with this lady. You're calling him a devil worshipper. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. Did he say that? Yeah. Did, is, did I say you worship the devil? Well, you, you call me a sectarian. Right. No, so that, exactly. If you're going to Follower go, of the devil, so if you go, go and watch the camera. If you're going to say something to so someone about what I've worshiper. said, if yeah, you're going to sure say my check. words to someone yeah. else, this get them right. Until you can yeah, correct him, I'm going to go back to my devil. conversation. Did you call him a follower of the devil? Madam, of the devil. do you want to continue? You, you've just got to ignore system. people like this. No, no, you called him I've the follower coming, of the madam, devil. I've been coming to this corner for six Why years. Why did you call him a follower of you the devil? You have some people in this corner who have no manners and they have no ability to control the themselves. You just have to ignore them. Don't don't stop the lady from talking. You're being rude. Yeah. You called him a devil worshiper. Go on, madam. What were you saying? I guess, I guess, I guess one thing to say, and, and I think perhaps we're going to disagree about how these values should be applied to say on the abortion question. Yeah. We're going to disagree about like which value wins out, right? In in, in, in the equation, right? And I'm going to place less value on life as you are, than you are, right? And I accept right. that. But now okay? let's go. Like, now let's get to the deep issue. No, no, on what I'm, metaphysical I'm, basis can you make that assessment? That, um, what is the metaphysical grounding yep. by which you can make the assessment that the, that life in the womb is not of the same value as the life outside of the womb? Now, I'm not asking. I'm not asking for some pragmatic utilitarian assessment of the the, the life. I'm asking for the metaphysical roots, as in, what is the origin? of the value itself by which you're making the judgment. What is it rooted in? Isn't it the Yeah, other than your own opinion. Well, I mean, okay. 
So, is are you coming from like a skeptical position, whereby like morality and our judgments about it need some sort of external uh, external source to validate them, independently of what morality already provides? So is that is that you skeptical about that? Exactly, and, and what I've and what I've said, and the reason why we ended up in this conversation is because I identified something independent of the moral question yeah. that is the grounding of yeah. the value system yeah. by which I'm making the value judgment. And, and, and I if Jesus yeah. Christ rose from the dead, yeah. then his teachings are true. Yeah. If his teachings are true, a, the value of life is, is precedent and therefore abortion is wrong. Right, okay. I mean, obviously, I have a substantive disagreement with you on that question. Which one? The abortion question. But, right, but going but, back to the external validation point. Yeah, what, what, is the, what, is the valid, what is the metaphysical validation of you? Yeah. What, who, what, no, no. What is the epistemological basis of saying that this life is not valuable? Like well, that life. Is valuable. I'm not denying that the life but is valuable. But it's not as valuable enough to keep alive. Oh well, no, it's just not sufficiently valuable to warrant in, to warrant the consequences of safeguarding the value. And so I'm right? I'm asking you on what epistemological and what on what ep metaphysical basis are you making that moral assessment? Um, I'm doing it on the on the teachings of Jesus, and I'm doing it because Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah. Those are my grounds. That's my foundation. What's yours? So, um, my and yeah, it's, so it's difficult. So you asked me a question about what validates moral judgments, right? What validates your moral judgments? Not my my moral judgments are validated yeah. by the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Which confirms his teaching. My, my reasoning. Your reasoning, right? But your right. But that is. So what you're saying is, it's your opinion. No, it's your I assessment it's, of the situation. Well, I mean, I don't think. So this might be a bit, bit, bit more of a controversial example. But let's suppose that. So in my view, there are some moral truths which we can we can state that are true objectively, right? That it's not it's not a matter of opinion. So like slavery is wrong. Right? I guarantee there are people in this park arguing that slavery is okay. But they're wrong. Should they be tolerated? No. Good. I'm glad we agree about that. But but what? It, that doesn't add anything to my judge, to my statement when I say it's really true that slavery is wrong. Right. And what I would right. say to you is here. It's hold, not just a matter of my opinion. Hold on. Hold on. When but, people say yeah, I, I heard that you. slavery is wrong, hold they on. don't just think, oh, it's a matter so, of my opinion so, that slavery yeah, is wrong. But, but they here's think it's the, actually true. So, it's a matter so, of morality. Yes, I, I know. But yeah. the, 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 you, you made a non sequitur statement. Or rather, you simply what we call begged the question. You said slavery is wrong. It's yeah. a matter of fact, slavery is wrong. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I agree with you. As a Christian, yeah. I have reasons to agree with you because Jesus said that I have come to set the captives free. When he talked about captives, he was talking about slaves. Well, and that's why... Wait, wait, one second. But you said the reason why I say slavery is wrong is because of my reason. But the point is... The point my is... Reasons, which yes, I could provide, yeah. so it's not circular but, 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 but the reason... Okay, so... So there is circularity at the bottom. The, right, and in, that's the point. Yeah, Let, yeah, hold on one second. That's just that's the, the point. That's, that's, that's the point, the, the circularity at the bottom. In other words, at, 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 at bottom, it's just going to amount to these are the conclusions that I've come to. But don't, don't you also have circularity at the bottom as well? No. Because if, okay, if I have I demonstrated. Then, why should the fact that Jesus Christ said that slavery is wrong be a reason for me to accept the, the judgment that slavery is wrong? That Jesus said. That, I, I'm going, that Jesus said that slavery is wrong is not a reason for you to accept that slavery is wrong. That Jesus is God and said that slavery is wrong is a reason for you to accept that slavery is wrong. So why should the fact that Jesus is God, why should that count as a reason for me to accept that slavery is wrong? Yeah, because, because Jesus said it. Why, because, why does the fact that Jesus is God matter? Because, because you're... Because, sorry. Authoritative figure. That's All right. Okay. But, but, like, so what? Just what, 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 what doesn't mean that so what, what they say is wait, wait. stand on, on your on your imperial self and your know, ability to think for yourself, which is what basically the enlightenment is all about. Who gives you that authority? What he's saying is his authority is God Himself. So, right. So, so, so who is your authority?
So if you're saying, if you're saying, that's, that's exactly okay, value, that's value. So, so sister, why is slavery wrong? So well, it's because a, it, it, it is the point that, of human dignity. Uh, so it causes harm because it, and all these things we can accept as. as but you say, as but as but as you're, you're in in but each but each of these statements, you're just begging the question. You're so stating you, so no, you. no, hold on. Because my my beliefs are rooted in Jesus' teachings, and Jesus' teachings are confirmed by his miraculous rising from the dead. It is, it is an objective event in history that happened to a real person that validates what he said. Because, because, because something I actually said to you earlier in our, our conversation, because if someone rises from the dead, they say an ordinary person. Someone literally says, I'm going to die, but I'm going to raise myself to life. And then he does, right? This is not your average common Joe on the street. This is not like me. So my point is, my point is. Yeah. Elliot Kipchoge, right? Fastest man, marathon runner, yep. sub two hour marathon. Yeah. He's not an ordinary person. Yeah. He's remarkable, right? Yes. Um, actually, so, why, so why don't we listen to him? Actually, right. actually, he did something that a non, an ordinary person can't do, but that doesn't mean that other, other people can't do it. Exactly. Well, I mean, okay, let's, yeah. let's stipulate then. So you can't Elliot train yourself Kogi. to die and then resurrect. You can't yeah, there's, there's no amount of training. There's no comparison there's, yeah. to being raised from the dead yeah. in three days. Yeah. So, so if, because you could train yourself to be as fast as that guy, or I could. Well, As I a mean, woman, you probably never could. Unfortunately yeah. not. And that's um, not a sexist comment. There's no, just a genetic fact. fact. Yeah, because yeah, I am, I am yeah. a baby maker. Just like exactly. I just, Which is a, a wonderful man, thing. No, man, why do you say unfortunately? As a man, you can never give I'm a runner, right? Birth. I'm an amateur athlete. Yeah. So I do a lot of racing or running. Yeah. And yeah, it, it, what, why, why, why do you want to be like a man? A Being a woman is beautiful. Yeah, you give life. Yes, but what if I want to be a fast woman? You can be a fast woman. You just can't be as fast as a man. You can be faster than him. You probably, you can probably be fast. Than than you probably are faster than me exactly. right now. You're probably so, so faster than me. But my point to you is, but my point to you is, you know, no. But my, but my point to you is that you, you know, you, like you said, I'm a baby maker. That's unfortunate. There's nothing unfortunate about being a woman. If sorry. being a woman is a no, wonderful no, thing. No, 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 sorry. If he, I, never, I, if he never had a mother, he wouldn't be here. So no, without, no. without you, the, the next, the oh. next. Hey, without her, I would still be here. No, yeah, <laughs> no, 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 without um, her, the next Abraham sorry. Lincoln man would be here. So don't get me wrong. I, I think, you know, as a matter of, the only. So my, my dissatisfaction with my womanness is, is relative to womanhood, is relative to my inability to run as fast as my guy is. Yeah. With yeah. as much ease as they do, right? So no matter how hard I train, I just can't beat them. That's not to say that I have a global dissatisfaction with my womanhood, right? Yeah. You know, there's, I, I don't dislike what evolution has given me. Um, that's probably another. Yeah, what evolution I believe in evolution. Given, okay, well, what evolution has given me, like, as a global matter, yeah. right? You know, um, can't think of anything right now, but, but like, I, I don't. It's, it's relative so, so, to my inability to be as forgive me, well, but, as strong as a man. So, so right? come back. So coming back to the point, I am, I am, and I'd like to give you another crack at it. But I haven't heard any epistemological and metaphysical groundings for your assertion that slavery is wrong. I agree with you, slavery is wrong. But I haven't heard any good groundings for why you think slavery is wrong. Because slavery is destructive of human dignity, it treats someone who is a human and deserves to be treated as a human, as less than human. But that's what abortion and that's does. Wrong. But abortion does that. Um, okay, but there's no, there's no, there's no, there's nothing, but in the abortion case, you have another interest here, which is the case which the interests of the woman. So we have some sort of... But in of, slavery, you have the interests of the slave owners. But their interests don't weigh much at all, if but, anything. They but, have no normative weight. But, but, and, 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 and I would agree with you. But my point, to you, do, do you see the point though, is that see, you, you appeal to one kind of logic to argue against slavery, but then I took that logic and applied it to abortion and you had to appeal to a different kind of logic. So the problem with no, second- the values I've just applied more weight to the value in one case and it's consistent logic. There's no, no, I would, I would, I would no, no, I disagree. Okay. I disagree completely. Because what you've said is that the value of an unborn life 
is less than that of a woman and less than that of a slave and less than that of uh, a master, right? So, I didn't say it was less than a master. Well, you, I, I am sure that you probably agree that it's... That well, that, 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 uh, a slave maybe, it, master's side interests issue. are more weighty it, it, than an unborn child. No, no, no I didn't say oh, that. I sorry. said the opposite. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, I, I, sorry. I, I misheard you. Yeah, yes, I, I said the opposite. Yes. Exactly, okay. So my point to you is, my point to you is that that you have you you have to massage the value depending on the topic. Yeah, but values apply differently in different cases. So that's, that's fine. Like my values, my values, my, my, the value of my promise. Yeah. will be weightier um, when you know the reason I want to break my promise is just that I want to watch a Netflix special, right? Yeah. And then you know other times. Um, the fact that you know I promise to meet for lunch tomorrow, that my child feels really sick. There, the value of my promise isn't sufficient to outweigh the value of me looking after my child. So it's permissible for me to break my promise. So you know, promising yes, might are, be valuable, but the weight we assign this, to so, the, so, so this is this is this is the Christian. The facts strain the weight of values. The, the, but but what I would say to you is that there are no facts. There are no facts. And, and there are no facts, there are no facts that we can assess that would lead to a conclusion that abortion is justified. And, and this is the point. Is a justified wrong. A justified wrong? So, so I thought we, we agreed earlier that it's possible, because so, I, I agree with you that if I had an abortion, in, in, you know, in cases other than like, say, if, unless my reasons were like, I'm going to die, yeah. unless I, have, I don't have an abortion, or I was yeah. raped, or you know, or it's, uh, you know, it's a product of abuse or something like that, then yeah, I think, I genuinely believe that I have something to regret. You haven't? I ha I've committed a wrong. When, you, when you said, when you said that we, we when you said that we should um, oppose slavery because it degrades a human being. Yeah. Well, I would say that there's no worse way to degrade a human being than ending their life, especially okay. when they're innocent, especially when they didn't ask to be brought in the world, yeah. especially when they didn't, they, 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 they're not causing you any harm, which they're not. No, a child is not, a, a growing child, a growing life in your womb is not the causing you harm. It is not, let me, let me, it is not causing you harm. You psychologically may cause yourself harm about how you think about it. it the, 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 harm yeah, but that's you causing yourself harm. The child has caused you no harm because it has no intentionality and oh, no, no ability to practice the any child intentionality. Isn't a moral agent yet, right? Exactly. So it is completely innocent. So therefore, we are saying that we're talking about taking an innocent life who has done no one any wrong purely because, for whatever reason, it doesn't suit us. What if the... Well, that, yeah, but I already agree it's wrong in those cases. But, but not, what case but, is not like that? So, I mean, rape, right, right? If I'm raped, I get pregnant. It's, it's... You think that, morally speaking, I should have... I should be forced to have that rapist's child. Because, because let's be clear, I didn't consent to sex. Agreed. Right, no consent. Yep. So the argument that I consented to sex, therefore I, I take responsibility, is not valid, right? Yeah. So in that case, how would you how, how would you weigh it? Weigh okay, on? great. So it's a great example. Firstly, obviously rape is wrong, and obviously the, 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 the person that does the rape should be suitably punished. And the person that is raped should be suitably supported, right? But none of that justifies taking the child's life. Did the child commit the rape? No. Did the child participate in the rape? No. Is the child is the child doing the woman any harm of itself? No, the harm is right. not. It's not. So the child one second, hold child. on one second. Hold on one second. That life therefore we are agreed is totally innocent, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Right. So if it is a totally innocent life, then we cannot justify taking a totally innocent life. What we must do is say to the woman that's raped, we are going to support you through your pregnancy, and then if you want, we will take the child away from you and we will raise, because you shouldn't have to be forced to raise that child. I guess in that scenario, that will also test your morality as well. So, uh, so in, in that I have a moral question yeah. when I when I have been raped and I need to decide whether I'm keeping my child or and on, a, on a basis of morality. Yeah, but I guess I guess like could you put like as a thought experiment like do you have children? No. But imagine you had a daughter, right? Yeah. Say she's twelve years old. And let's say she was raped. She's raped. Yeah. She's pregnant. Yes. What would I do? I would not kill an innocent child. But you, so 
think you would, I think, I think you what would put her through giving birth. So uh, not only does she have the trauma and the horror of the rape to deal with, but she then has the horror and the trauma of not being able to forget the rape because the consequences of it are, 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 are assuming, changing assuming her body. That, assuming that I'm not in prison for doing something to the rapist, and uh, oh, I was there. The rape, the rape yeah. As far as I'm yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sympathetic to the idea of castration, you know, like to, to rape. Wouldn't go that far, but you know. But, I but, my, 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 but, but, my, but my point is, 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 that even in the scenario that you've portrayed, and as horrific as that situation would be, my child is innocent, and her child is innocent. Yeah. There's two innocent parties. Yeah. And you can't right one wrong by doing another wrong. But, but you're, 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 in that case, I would say, you are torturing the innocent. No, she's no, not. No, no. She's not. Come on. After you've been betrayed, she's talking about you're being, the I'm not torturing her. The, 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 you're talking about the psychological implications of the... Did I rape her? You don't, no, of course you didn't. No. So but I'm not can torturing agree, her. Can you agree that you are forcing her to carry her and give birth to her rapist child? I am not forcing her wait, to wait, carry in her rapist world, child. She wouldn't be able to Agreed, that's correct. So in correct. effect you're forcing her. No, there's no force here. It is it, any more than any more than when we make for instance a law that um, no actually, let me retreat from that. I would agree. No, I take it back. Okay. There is a degree of force here. Yeah. Okay. But but the, the the force is justified. Right, okay. Okay. And hopefully I, I hopefully disagree. I, I hopefully Hopefully I would raise my child to share my values and beliefs and she would also agree that her child is innocent and we would work together to work through the whole situation. I guess in that stage, you'll, you'll also have to consider therapy for that child as well. Yeah. Whether, whether you abort the child or you keep the child, therapy will have to be considered during that process. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, so my, my point, to, but I want to come back, I, want, I, I also, I, I, I'm also conscious that this brother wants to ask questions. Yeah, Bro, are you, how much time have you got? Are you still wanting oh, to ask questions? Hanging on. No, we're going to the pub at about, about, about half an hour. Right. Well, I, I, should probably, I should probably make right. no, 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 what, What's your name, sister? Uh, Ali. Ali. Nice to meet you, Ali. It's been a really pleasure. Have, have, you, have you got sister. a Bible? Um, I do, but not. I, yeah, I do have a Bible. Okay. I want to I wanna re encourage you to read about the life of Jesus. And, 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 and I just, you know, like yeah, just as we're, we're leaving, what, who do you think Jesus is? How do you? What, what's your opinion of Jesus Christ? Um, I think uh, that Jesus was probably a very good person. I, I believe that he uh, was very influential and he was um, probably quite a remarkable human being. Um, and that he said a lot of things which made a lot of good sense um, and that still makes sense. Um, I guess where I, dis I guess where I, what I don't believe about Jesus is that he is divine. That, okay. That's, that's where I just Okay. So I would, I would, I would say our men to. Not abortion, though. You didn't say I, I, I would, I would say our men to everything you said about his humanity, because I agree. That's what I believe about his humanity as well. But Jesus himself claimed to be more than human. He claimed also to be divine, and that that claim is validated by the resurrection. And my point to you is that. If you, just, just at the human level, if you think Jesus is a great man, the simple message of Christianity is that we be students of Jesus. That we learn about him, we learn about what he teaches, and we learn about his perspective on the world. And if you recognize that he's a great man, and I say amen to that because he is a great man, that, that, that consider being a good student of his. Consider learning his perspective. Consider learning from him. Because if you recognise he's a good man, I'm sure you've learnt from other great men and women before. Yeah. Right, well here's just another one to learn from. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I would yeah, happily take up that invitation. So, yeah, I, yeah. I'd encourage you to, to read the Gospel, and then, you know, if you come up, you read something and you go, ah, this would be a great question, you'll not, Bob won't have the answer to this one, <laughs> I've got him on this one. Write down your questions, come back and talk to me. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, it was really a pleasure chatting to you. Right, I'd like yeah. to give you a gift. I gave everyone a gift that I talked to. Just, to. just to round it up with the Bible first. Yeah. As in terms of where life, what, what Christians believe of life before it is even formed in the, within the world. This is Jeremiah chapter 5, right? So it's written, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth, 
out of the room and yeah. sanctify it. So, you in your, your mother's womb. so essentially what it's saying is that before the, the, the fetus, it even becomes a fetus within the stomach. Thank you so much. The, the God, of, the God so much. of Jesus Christ, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Israel already knows the child before it's even it's before it's even How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good to see you. Uh, Abby? Ali. This, Ali, sorry. This is my gift to you. Thank you very much. This is someone I know personally talking about how Jesus changed his life. Oh, wow. yeah. And I know the man, so the, I know the man that wrote the book. So, um, you know, because as, as, as Christians, like encountering Jesus is, is something that you have to experience, but it's always transformative. And whether you engage with him as just a great teacher or whether like me, you acknowledge him as your Lord and savior, there's no encounter with Jesus that won't be powerful and that won't change. And, and so I just want to encourage you to, to explore that journey and if you want to come and talk more again, and please do. You have a good day. Well, I don't, big, I don't use my real name here. I just, yeah, just Bob. But actually everybody calls me Bob the Builder. The Builder, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, well, it was a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure, pleasure to meet you, God bless, God bless. Take care. Right, I'm well, thank you. How are you, bro? Right, bro. Shall I ask a couple of questions then? Yeah, if you want to ask questions, let's do questions. Me? I mean, I've been no, no, you're, you're, you're next. The oh, others have walked. Drop off and ask discussion? Um, oh, yeah, before we kind of like forget about it. Yeah. All right, so, so over there, we'll see you um, Gave a, a talk, ended up talking to a, a, a classical liberal okay. and a classical liberal humanist. All right. And I think that we, I think that I, I demonstrated quite convincingly yeah. that classical humanism and secular humanism yeah. has no metaphysical roots, no real foundations yeah. upon, or upon which to base its values. The values of the Enlightenment did not come out of the use of reason, despite what John Locke thought. The values of the Enlightenment came out of a trauma, the trauma of the Reformation. In other words, they were values by necessity. And every classical liberal today simply advocates those values as normative because they've received them by tradition. Thank you, Martin Luther. And, and the, 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 no, let's not get sectarian, Jason. Um, and so the, 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 the reality is, yeah. the reality is that Christianity yeah. is a more fundamental basis upon which to build our society because it is built in deep, metaphysical foundations which is Christ's teaching and that is confirmed by Christ's resurrection which is a historical event. So any message, any last message to the lady? Yeah watching. if you want to get in touch you contact me on BTB that's Bravo Tango Bravo Soco S-O-C-O -O, at gmail.com and that's the same for anyone else. Thank you, Right bro